Alright, this video I'm going to talk about mental illnesses. Um, it's going to be pretty thorough because I'm going to go through a lot of different things as far as my thoughts are concerned in that. Somebody sent me a message and he specifically st stated about depression, anxiety, social anxiety, panic attacks, and bipolar. Um, I'm specifically going to address each one of those issues and share my thoughts on it um, as thoroughly as I can. So this video should be pretty long. Um, First off, I want to start off to say that I don't, you know, I come from the East, you know, um, my roots are from China. I was born in America, but I was raised, you know, in the Chinese way, you know, as far as um, the upbringing is concerned. Um, it was hard to put a label to it, but now that I've gotten older, my parents never said, hey, you know, this is what we're raising you with. They never said that I was Buddhist or Taoist or anything like that. They just basically raised me a certain way that's very different than um, the average American family. Um, so, but now that I look back studying studying my, my culture, I noticed that, you know, I was raised with like the Buddhist values and the Taoist values and um, with the Buddhist and the Taoist, um, it's, you know, it's more about like natural healing, you know. China's known for acupuncture, you know, that's a big thing. They're also known for like massage therapy So the East, um, in China, they're known for acupuncture, which is more of like a natural healing, um, and also for um, massage therapy, you know, that's more of a natural healing. They're also known for like herbs and teas, which is more of a natural type of cleansing of the body. So also the way that they eat is a lot more healthier than the way that we eat in America. In America, we eat a lot of, a lot of like horrible junk food, but in the East, you know, you know, they eat a lot of rice, they eat a lot of veggies, and when they eat meat, it's not like in huge portions. It's not like they eat like a big slab of steak, you know, with potatoes, you know. They'll cut off, cut up the steak into little pieces and mix it in with a stir fry, which is a lot healthier. So, you also notice in the East, not just in China, but also in Japan, um, they're also known to be living the longest. You know, um, you know, a lot of the people live like well over, you know, live up to well over a hundred. Um, even my own grandma, she's still alive. She's she's uh, she's up there in age. She's almost close to a hundred. If you look at my father, he's 65 years old and um, he's still in great shape, you know, for his age. Still very active, you know, I think he ran in about 17 marathons or more. Been in about 12 triathlons or 13 of them. He trains with me three times a week. Um, he rides his bike a lot and um, He's in great shape for his age. Um, even his brothers that work out, they still look very young for their age. So, like, I see that there's a lot to learn from the East. And as far as medicine is concerned, um, the Eastern ways is more about a natural way of healing. But in the West, um, it's almost like they want to hide that from you because they want to profit. You know, it's a big business. 
the medical industry is a huge um, profiting industry. So they're not going to want to, you know, tell you that, hey, you know, if you drink this tea, then you'll heal. They want to basically prescribe you with medication and make you dependent on the medication so then they could profit off you for the rest of your life. Um, that's how I see it. Um, a lot of the things in the East is natural healing. Um, when I was raised, we, know, we never had to call the ambulance or anything like that. Or we never had to call the police. We, you know, we'd handle things within the family and um, you know, with like natural healing methods. Um, so as far as you know, these, these mental conditions are concerned, you know, I, I have a, a huge problem with it because I think a lot of these times they would diagnose somebody and just say, like, pretty much no matter who you have that goes to the psychologist, they always find something wrong. Like, there's no such thing in their eyes. There's no such thing as, like, a perfect human. So they'll always say that there's something wrong with you. You know, you got this type of disorder, you know, um, you need this medication, you know. And then these people that are prescribing this stuff, they're they're mentally unstable themselves. So it's like you got the people prescribing the medication who are mentally unstable trying to assess somebody that they're judging to be mentally unstable. Essentially, according to their eyes, everything is mentally unstable. Um, but a lot of it is their way of thinking, their thought processes, I feel, are incorrect. Like they're not, they're not following the true way. Like they're not, they're not really sages. You know, the true sages are like the truly wise people that's ever lived, the mystics. These are the individuals that really know the true way of life. None of these psychologists out there know that way. They're all, you know, basically book smart. They have a lot of strong mind, but they don't know anything about a strong spirit. So you can study as many psychologists as you want, but none of them are going to be at the level of wisdom of like somebody like Buddha or um, J. Krishnamurti or Osho or Jesus you know these people are really on the you know they're trying to I mean they're they're basically experts of the mind but there's a, there's an entire other category that goes beyond the mind which is something that they just don't understand so Everything that they prescribe or everything that they they think that they know is really not the true way, according to my eyes. You know, basically the whole psychology is based off the teachings of like Sigmund Freud, um, from my understanding. And Sigmund Freud, he doesn't get it, you know. Like basically, it's like the people in power would use him as a tool to control the masses of people, you know. To basically strengthen the economy and anything that opposes the teachings of Sigmund Freud they will get rid of it they will destroy it so you know if you do your research um, there there is a there is a, um, a psychologist or somebody by the name of Wilhelm Reich I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right but um, he did some significant research into like curing cancer and the East is known for this thing called like chi energy and they talk about it in like tai chi in the martial arts a lot about this chi energy and the west still haven't really grasped a total understanding of it but there's this thing called this chi energy that is like a life energy this life energy force that um the east has an understanding of it and this energy could be used for healing okay so like, Wilhelm Reich got closer into the understanding of the Eastern ways. And then he, st he built this, this mechanism that was able to, like, heal people, you know. Heal them naturally from, like, things like cancer. And when the government found out that he was doing this, they immediately jailed him and destroyed his research. Destroyed his equipment. Um, basically what he was coming about was he was basically getting a scientific 
understanding of Tantra. He was getting like a scientific understanding of how like like the orgasm could have like healing powers. You know, he was like getting a he would like put people in the box and then they would you know, I think he would have them like you know, be affectionate with each other and hugging and kissing and he'd do things like that or he'll put them in this box enclosure and some somehow he was able to generate some of these this chi energy and this this energy from the orgasm the you know similar to what tantra would specialize in as far as like bringing this type of energy together and it had this healing power to heal people from cancer you know but as I stated, the government found out about it because he's healing all these different people in this natural method. And then they ended up putting him in jail and putting him in like in a mental institute and destroying everything that he, that he uh, discovered. Because they were very much afraid that if this gets out to the public, you know, they're not going to really, they're not going to be able to profit off of all these cancer treatments that they do and, you know, chemotherapy or whatever or you know all these surgeries um, the government and the people in power don't want the people to know about natural healing methods okay so if you do your research on this person his name is Wilhelm Reich you know and he's somebody that was coming close he was like a a western person that was coming to a very close understanding of the eastern ways and he was able to prove it through science and that would have been dramatic, you know, it would have been a dramatic, um, you know, you know, discovery for the West, but they destroyed his teachings. You know, they said that he wasn't practicing, that he wasn't allowed to practice medicine because he wasn't licensed and whatever the case may be. Um, and they, they found something to, you know, to jail him for, and that's what they did. They burned all his books and everything, and just think about it, you know, why would you burn all the books of somebody, you know, unless there's a threat, you know? Um, why would you burn somebody's books and destroy his research? So there's something, you know, he was basically coming to a real understanding of the chi energy, you know, and, this, and, prove, and being able to prove it through science, okay? You also do your research. Um, Sigmund Freud used to work with the person who was in his assistant, um, Carl Jung. Now, Carl Jung, his teachings are more related to the Eastern ways. His teachings are more about, like, rather than having the ego be, you know, the center, you know, of a human's existence, he would basically say, you know, signify that there's something beyond this ego there's like a universal like consciousness and basically as soon as he started to get closer to these eastern ways and this the eastern understanding um sigmund freud cut him off immediately um because he wanted to keep going on with his way his method that was pretty much promoting the western economy and the strong ego means a strong economy. It means greater riches. So it's um, it's pretty clear that the West is all about the riches, and that's why America is so rich. And the East is 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 pretty much more spiritual, but they're not as materially rich. So Carl Jung was uh, somebody who was getting closer to the truth, but then because he got cut off from Sigmund Freud. His teachings are not really, I mean, he's still popular, people still know about him, but his teachings don't have as much, nearly as much of an influence as Sigmund Freud in America. It's almost like any university that you go to, if you study psychology, it's going to be revolved around Sigmund Freud. It's not going to be revolved around anybody else. And Carl Jung was once again one of those other people that was coming closer to the real truth. Um, and he, because he was getting closer to those Eastern ways and that understanding. Um, so there's, there's clearly, um, it's it's like a an organized, orchestrated method of preventing the public from gaining 
an understanding of the Eastern ways because the Eastern ways are not as corrupted as the Western ways. I'm not going to say it's free from corruption, but it's definitely going to be less corrupt than the Western ways. And you're going to find greater truth from the East. Okay. Um, Osho, you know, he even mentioned in a few of his books that I've read where, you know, you often may wonder why these doctors, um, they, they scribble and they, the way that they write, nobody could read it. And you just wonder, like, why is it that every single doctor, you cannot read his handwriting? Well, there's a reason behind that. And the reason is basically they teach these doctors, like, this, this secret type of language that nobody really understands. And they would basically have them write in this way, this codified way, so that nobody could read it except for the people within that small-knit community. Um, you know, like the doctors and the pharmacists and whatnot, because they're all working together to pretty much um, cheat people for their money and get people to become dependent on these these medicines, this medication. So what he, they would basically do, instead of like, if you go in there and you need, there's something wrong with you, the doctor knows, okay, this person needs an onion. And then he'll heal. If he eats onion, he's going to heal. So rather than writing an onion on the prescription, he'd write it in this really codified language that you cannot read. And then you bring it to the pharmacist. The pharmacist looks at the, the prescription, which is basically saying onion in that codified language. And they're pretty much giving you the onion in a pill format and charging you like $800 for it. When in actuality, you could go to the supermarket and get it for like 50 cents. So rather than going and buying an onion yourself for 50 cents, you're going to the doctor, he makes money, and then you go to the pharmacist, they make money, the drug company makes money. So instead of charging you 50 cents at the grocery store, you're getting charged $800 for an onion. Okay, so that's essentially what Osho explained in uh, several of his books, and that really does make sense to me and it really shows to me how there's this orchestrated um, method within the, this society to suppress the people from really obtaining like true health. Um, they're making you very dependent on these drugs and once you beca become dependent on these drugs it's like their lifelong method of profiting from you and to Wean yourself out of this dependency is not going to be an easy thing. Um, I live my life very naturally. I eat natural foods as much as I can because obviously everything out there is not completely natural because you know you don't know what's injected and what type of steroids are injected and all this stuff and you know all this um, preservatives and things like that. But I eat as naturally as I can in this Western society and I live a very natural life. I don't, I, I don't drink, I never have, I don't smoke, I never have, I never smoked weed, I never took any drugs like crack or cocaine or any of those illegal drugs, um, I don't take drugs, I don't smoke, I don't drink, but one thing that I do do is obviously, you know, obviously I do um, enjoy intimacy and affection, so I do um, share that with my wife and things like that, ex that experience. And that is like a natural drug. Um, the orgasm in itself is uh, something that has like huge healing methods as far as like a natural healing is concerned. Um, not just the orgasm, but affection. Um, hugging, kissing, holding hands, and um, that type of close bond with another human. The sharing of energies in that way. Um, even massaging each other and things like that is a huge... Um, healing natural a uh, natural healing method um, that could lead to an immense amount of mental health uh, physical health and spiritual health health so but experiencing that is like a natural drug to me and that is in itself becomes addictive it can be where you become so dependent on it that you need it every single day 
in order to, you know, to, to not be depressed and not to be, you know, um, you know, to basically be like, have that, to find that inner peace. So even though I never took other drugs and I only experienced this type of natural drug, I can understand how people can be addicted to these other substances. Because it's like, there's so much benefit to this natural drug of intimacy to me that it's hard to live without it um, or to be forced to live without it. And even if you were forced to live without it, inside you would still desire it and still um, plan for it and wish for it. So when you have this natural way of healing yourself through this natural drug, which is intimacy, um, they can't profit off of it. So basically, you find a beautiful lady that you're attracted to, she hugs and kisses you, and you guys become intimate. The economy doesn't make money off of that, you know. So they're not going to want you to do that. They want you to pay for some type of drug and become addicted to that drug so they can make money off of you. So in some of these states, they legalize prostitution because they want the men to pay for sex so they can make money off the sex. Um, that's why they don't have a problem with pornography because they want, they're making money off of pornography. When they make this video, um, you know, everybody's getting paid, you know, that. The, the actors and actresses in the video are getting paid. They distribute the video and then they make money off the video. So they're going to allow that. Um, so they want you to be a, dependent on some sort of drug that they could profit from you. So rather than promoting you to be intimate with somebody where they don't make money off of that, off of hugs and kisses and intimacy, then they're going to try to make you dependent on alcohol as a way of getting you to forget about your inner pain. So they'll get you to drink your problems away. So if you're depressed, just drink a lot of alcohol. They make money off the alcohol, get you hooked on the alcohol, and then profits for the economy. So that's what they want you to do. You feel depressed, drink some alcohol, forget all about it, have some fun, make money from you, okay? If it's not alcohol, then it'll be marijuana, okay? They make money off the marijuana. So you're having some depression, okay? Then smoke this marijuana. We'll make money off you. All right? If it's not marijuana, then it might be cigarettes. Okay? Oh, you're stressed? Just go smoke a cigarette. Everything will be okay. They make money off of that. Um, they make money. If it's not cigarettes, not alcohol, it's not weed. If it's not crack, then it'll be... The prescriptions that you get from the psychologist or the doctor to prescribe you with antidepressants, whatever the case may be, so they can make money off you. Okay, these doctors are making a lot of money. These drug industries are making a lot of money. Okay, um, they want you to be dependent on this drug, you know, so then you can strengthen the economy. But the natural healing methods, if I'm talking about depression right now, Everybody gets depressed. Everybody. So that's just a part of life. There's no way that you can ever go through life without being depressed. Okay? To share some information about my personal life before getting to this point, um, you know, before finding love, before meeting who is my wife right now, you know, I would say that I was depressed, you know, quite often. I was sad a lot, you know. I could say that that was true. Because inside, I always wanted this connection with another, you know, human, you know, especially a female, you know, in an intimate way. And I had a hard time finding that, you know. And every day I'd go through life waking up, and I'd be thinking about that, you know. And that would be one of the things that I was in lack. So that was causing my depression, a big cause of it. Now, there's even 
there is some tr there's there's this experimentation which is true they found through study that like these infants would um literally die you know without affection you know you would give them milk give them food but they would restrict the affection from the mother and these infants would literally die so affection is needed you know um for the human being to be mentally like complete mentally at peace um i don't want to call it sex because it's been so impure like it's, it's been so corrupted that word that people view it in such a negative way but when i say affection i would incorporate all forms of all forms of affection that are positive in nature like hugging somebody kissing somebody holding somebody's hands smiling with people laughing with people um you know oral sex you know real sex just connecting with another human in a very deep way physically mentally just combining those energies it has an, an immense amount of healing powers that no drug can ever surpass because that's the natural drug okay so like I would say that through my process of development I might have been considered depressed just like a lot of people out there um, but my turning point came when I came upon my enlightenment where I came to a deep realization of just consciousness and basically identifying this ego that was within me and now no longer allowing it to control me so I'm not saying that we should be dependent on another human or another woman to f give us happiness what I'm saying is that that's part of the missing puzzle but the main part of the of the thing that needs to be fixed is more about your inner happiness your inner confidence in yourself and that's the most important and when I came upon my enlightenment I, I stopped my ego from having control over me and then I started to live my life according to like my heart so I started to essentially just be myself and be proud of being myself and basically not being dependent on other people's approval but just basically following my heart and even if I had to stand alone I was willing to do that and that what that did is it, it strengthened me it gave me a very strong spirit and it gave me confidence in myself and it gave me time to reflect and develop my inner being to the point where um, I no longer had to look for any woman to fall in love with me but essentially the woman started to come towards me because they felt the energy that I had built up through my own like development of myself and concentrating my energies towards developing myself and then the woman ended up coming into my life and then basically doubling my energy so meaning before meeting you know a special lady and before I became enlightened I felt that I was depressed but through enlightenment through meditation through understanding of this inner spiritual work I ended up starting to build up energy within myself so my energy say it was zero percent then I started to build it up to become a hundred percent when I had that hundred percent of energy that started to attract the woman from the outside towards me and then we started connecting and then when we connected it doubled my energy from 100% to 200% because the energy from another human being just accumulates to have even more powerful energy and that is when you get taken to a higher level in the spiritual realm you know um, so that that was my experience you know and from then on like especially with the practice of meditation and with 
this unlimited access to affection and intimacy, you know, I never really had depression because I was healed. I healed myself through meditation. I healed and then what even made it me even stronger was the affection and intimacy that I was receiving from a woman, you know, that, that you know, that I love, you know, and that felt the same way for me. So the real the root of medicine, you know, meditation comes from the root word of um, medicine. So you look about, look at it. Medicine, meditation, they sound very similar because they meditation came from the word medicine. So basically, meditation is essentially the natural healing method, you know, for the mind. Now, medication is what they want you to be dependent on so they could profit from you. But meditation is something that anybody could practice at any time, at any place, and they could heal them. It could bring that inner peace. So depression is essentially, what causes depression is excessive thinking. Like you're just thinking too much. You got all these thoughts in your mind and you can't control it and what you end up doing you start thinking about a lot of negative things. It starts bringing you down, and then you become depressed. Meditation is essentially getting you to learn how to stop all that excessive thinking, to clear your mind. And when you clear your mind, then it brings you at peace. Okay, so the stronger a person gets in meditation, then the less dependent that he'll have to be onto drugs. But the thing is, when you become dependent on a drug, no matter if the doctor prescribes it to you, and then you're constantly taking that drug, or if you're drinking alcohol, and you're constantly drinking alcohol week after week, or you're smoking weed, and you're constantly smoking weed week after week, your dependency on that drug will be so strong that it's going to be very hard to let it go. And if you don't let it go, then you pretty much end up becoming dependent on it for life, which is essentially what they want. Um, but if you stop your dependency on that drug and you turn your energies towards meditation as a natural healing method, then, um, then, you, then you'll no longer need that drug in order to find that balance that you're looking for. Okay. Um, another example is like exercise. Exercise brings like a natural healing for the body and the mind as well. Now, what they could do is say, hey, you know, you don't need to exercise, just drink coffee. You'll get energy from coffee. Well, they want you to be dependent on the coffee so they can profit from you. But if you exercise, which is a natural thing where people can't really necessarily profit from you. I mean, if you hire a personal trainer, they're gonna profit from you. If you go to the gym, they're gonna profit from you. But if you exercise outside, nobody can really make money off of you. You know, you exercise in your home, nobody can make money off of you. So that's another natural healing method. But they don't want you to do that. They want you, instead of drinking, you know, instead of exercising, just drink coffee so we can make money from you. Coffee will give you energy. And when you keep drinking coffee, then your body becomes dependent on it. And then when you don't drink it, you feel this major difference. And you're not going to like that because you're not going to have the energy that you're used to. So you keep drinking and drinking and drinking it, you become dependent on it, and then they got you. Until you start to realize that, you know what, i got to stop this drinking of this coffee, start this natural way of exercise, so then you know, I will not be dependent on this for energy, okay? So, that's another example. All right, so, as far as depression is concerned, I would say that people that need to go to the psychologist and they need to be prescribed medication because they say that they're depressed, I uh, say that they've been tricked by the society, by those so-called experts, into being dependent on that drug, I'd say that depression could be naturally healed through meditation, but you need to be strong in meditation. Other things that can heal depression, which is natural, is exercise. 
okay you know when you exercise cardio training no matter be running biking swimming or if you do circuit training with weights cardio training is important uh, strength training is important flexibility training is important if you follow this uh, exercise program it's gonna naturally take away you know it's gonna naturally help decrease depression because when you're exercising it releases it releases certain chemicals in the brain you know that is like a natural healing of depression so meditation will heal depression exercise will help heal depression what else will help heal depression is intimacy okay when you're hugging when you're kissing when you're being intimate when you're having sex with somebody that you care about and they care about you and you're sharing that energy together that's a huge um, healing method of depression um, orgasm extremely effective method of healing depression because you might be depressed and you're thinking about all these things but as soon as you become intimate it brings you into the moment with that individual and as soon as you start to orgasm it releases this type of en energy in your body that heals the depression okay it takes it away you know um, so orgasm intimacy will heal depression you know um, that affection will heal depression okay so even if you don't have a partner then um, it could be like a natural healing um, orgasm through masturbation um, is another method to naturally heal that depression okay but the society will not teach you that they're gonna say that masturbation is a sin um, because what they want you to do they want you to be dependent on their drug to heal the depression so rather than masturbating and then forgetting about all the pain and the suffering then they want you to drink alcohol or go to the psychologist and get this drug and take this pill that will take away the depression but orgasm there's something about the orgasm which is very powerful in pretty much bringing an absolute calmness and peace peacefulness within the body within the mind and it can help you grow spiritually so that is another method if you don't have a partner and then you do the practice the mat masturbation that is more of like a natural healing method you know of depression you know um, so we're what we're concerned about is finding natural ways of healing so another thing that will heal depression is uh, nutrition if you eat very healthy um, you eat healthy foods you know you drink lots of water uh, you drink like 100 percent juice you eat a lot of fruits you eat a lot of vegetables you eat rice um, like you eat healthy foods that will heal depression as well you know they all these things that I'm stating they all have to come together not just doing one thing but you gotta do all of it then the depression will just essentially just disappear you know um, the exercise and the eating healthy what else will heal the depression is gonna better your body image okay so now when you exercise so much and you eat so healthy you end up becoming more physically attractive it's just gonna happen because that's what naturally happens when you become more physically attractive you look yourself in the mirror then you will not be disgusted you'll be you'll be um, comfortable with wearing whatever type of clothing you want you'll be comfortable naked you look at yourself in the body you, you know in the mirror and you wow you know you look at yourself and you'll be like wow it's, it's like a work of art and you appreciate it it's like looking at a beautiful painting. You're like, wow, you know, I want to keep looking at this painting because it's beautiful. But if you if you got like something that's not pretty, you know, something that's not visually appealing, then you don't want to look at it. But if your body is not healthy, if you're not, you don't exercise, you don't look good, 
then you're not going to want to look at yourself in the mirror and that's going to cause depression as well. So the exercise and nutrition will bring upon a better body image, a more attractive body image, and that's going to help heal depression. What else it's going to do, the better body image, you know, um, the exercise, through the exercise and nutrition, the better body image, and then also the exercise and the nutrition, healing the mind where you're just more of a positive person, then more and more people are going to be attracted to your presence. Not just because you're physically more attractive, but mentally, it's like they feel this positive energy and they want to be around you. So what ends up happening is the people start getting attracted to you and then you get attracted to the person and then you can build intimacy with that individual and come together, share intimacy and that's another very significant contribution towards the healing of depression. Okay, so these are all ways of healing depression. Other ways is, you know, the intimacy, the playfulness that you receive from maybe animals, like a cat or a dog, you know. The dog's happy, then you could share that happiness with you and get you to forget about all this mental stuff that's going on in your head. The animal could help, you know, because the animals are just naturally meditative. They don't think much. They're just in the moment. So animals could help with depression. You know, having a pet or something like that could help. You know, um, what else could help with depression is uh, like music, like calming, relaxing music, positive music, relaxing music, meditative music could help. You know, because that energy from the music can go through your ears and just kind of almost transform your body you know, to be more, more positive. So, music can help. Okay. Um, it could even boil down to even scents, like just the smell, you know. Good smells could put you in a good mood. Okay, so pay attention to what type of, what type of scents that you have around you know, what kind of mood it could put you in. I mean, really, I mean, from my own experiences, me, me changing diaper does not be, put me in a good mood because of the smell. I don't like it, you know. But when there's good scents, good smells, that could change, have an effect on your mind and, and put you in a better mood, okay. So just think about all the senses that we talk about, you know. Get this, the touching, which is the affection, you know. Also things like um, getting a massage can help relax you, help calm the mind. That can heal depression. Foot massage, full body massage. Okay, Anything where there's touching with intimacy and affection can heal depression. Thinking about the smells. The tasting is the food. You got to have the right food. The visual. Keeping your body clean and healthy. So, taking care of yourself, good hygiene, cutting your hair, um, taking showers, um, wearing nice clothes. I mean, just taking care of your body is extremely important. Other things that can help heal depression, sleep. Like, you got to make sure that you get enough sleep. I recommend to have at least like eight hours a day. You know, eight hours a night, I mean, you know. Um, six to eight hours a night of sleep is very important. Sleep, if you know, everything could be going great, but if you don't get good sleep, it's going to be hard to be happy. So sleep is another thing that's very important as well. Okay. Other things that are important, if you look into things like Feng Shui, which is another thing that comes from China. Feng Shui comes from China. Acupuncture comes from China. Massage therapy comes from China. Um, like... There's a lot of things coming from the East. The, the food that they eat is very healthy. The Chinese food and things like that. The martial arts comes from China. You know, but when we talk about... Um,
when we talk about these things that are coming from the East, uh, we need to practice this way of life in order to find happiness from within. Okay. Um, the Feng Shui. So Feng Shui is basically like your environment, you know, and being aware of how your environment can affect you. And there's, a, there's really a science behind it, but it's kind of hard to get people to understand it. But everything matters. So if you have a home, you keep the windows closed all day, that's not good because you need some good fresh air circulation. That's going to help things, help heal you. Less depression. Just imagine being enclosed in a room constricted it's like being in prison of course you're going to be depressed sometimes just going out for a nice walk could help heal you get you not to be depressed other things that it's um when they prove it through science through research people get depressed in winter time because they're inside all the time but when it's nice out and the sun's out beautiful weather and you're outside a lot less depression okay um, so the weather can make a change as well. Sometimes there's things where nature is, is, is um, controlling it and you can't even do anything about it. You might be a very happy person, but because it's just that time of the month, it's the winter time, then you're going to get a little, you might get a little depressed during that time because the weather has changed and that's going to affect your mood. Okay, so the weather makes a difference. Sunlight's important. Getting some sunlight can help with depression. Fresh air can help with depression. A clean, organized environment is extremely important also to help with depression. You know, if you got like a cluttered up car that's all dirty and stuff, then it could symbolize like a dirty mind, like it's not clean. Okay? Clean up your car, clean up the outside, clean up the inside, organize it, make it clean. That's like cleaning the mind. Your bedroom, messy everywhere, it, it is encouraging a messy mind, a dirty mind. Clean up the bedroom, make it organized, make it clean. That's like cleaning the mind. So the environment of where you live is very important. Have everything clean, have everything in, in order, have things that are... Um, organized what else is important is um japan is known for this japan is known for like their zen way of like living which is a very simplified way of living like they don't they don't have like too many things they'll have a room and then they'll they'll, they'll, they'll decorate it very very like consciously meditatively they're not going to have too much junk laying around they're going to have things that really you know balance out the entire room, you know, very, very, very neat and organized and simple. So clutter is a big no-no. Clutter is going to really, um, it is going to really contribute to your depression. Less clutter, you know, organizing things, keeping things simple. What else matters is, it even boils down to different colors. Different colors emit a different type of energy. And if you... There's certain colors that may bring negativity within you. And if you don't know that these colors are not good colors for you, then that could cause depression. So colors could uplift you, could, could bring life to you. And that goes back to the visual. You know, like, because, you, you know, when you open your eyes, you see all these different colors. These colors are affecting your, your inner inner being. So being attentive and aware of what type of colors that you have within your living arrangement, what type of colors that you wear for clothing. Okay, so like home design, you know, your clothes, you know, cleanliness, you know, all these things matter. Fresh air. Another thing that can help heal depression is being close to nature. Like, 
close to animals, in the forest, by the lake, by the beach, in the mountains, like close to nature can help heal depression. Okay, and closing yourself in a closet, in a room, going to jail, I mean, these are things that's constricting you. That's not going to help. Okay, your physical health is extremely important to help you to help you feel good, to help you not be depressed, okay? Um, just think about an athlete, an Olympic athlete that gets injured. He's clearly going to be depressed because he's injured. You know, so basically you want to take care of your health. You don't want to be injured. You don't want to have a broken leg. You wanna, don't want to have a broken arm. You don't want to be sh get shot or stabbed at. You, you, you want to be healthy. You don't want your skin full of like pimples and that could cause depression. You know, your face is full of pimples and then you become very unattractive because of that. That could cause depression. You know, having a missing tooth, you know, could cause a depression. I mean, brushing your teeth, take care of your teeth, take care of your skin, take care of your body. If you're overweight, that could cause depression. Okay, so eat right, exercise. You know, like, you got to take care of your body, your health. You know, um, because if you don't, if you're not healthy, it's going to be very hard to be happy. So health is extremely important. You know. And other things is just kind of staying away from negativity. Um, if you're around a lot of negative people, it could bring upon depression. It could bring depression. Also, paying attention to what you allow into your life. I mean, if you're listening to the radio and it's feeding you negative energy, you gotta shut that radio off because the radio could cause you depression. If you're watching a movie and it's not a movie that's giving you positive energy, then you gotta shut that movie off. If you're watching a video on YouTube and it's giving you negative energy, then you gotta shut that video off. You go on to Facebook and there's negative energy everywhere all over Facebook and it's making you negative, you gotta shut that off. So we gotta be very aware of what we allow into our lives as far as media is concerned. Because that has a huge effect on our mood and whether or not we're gonna be happy or depressed. So we gotta be attentive to that as well. You know, it's like every little thing makes a difference. And even the job that you choose. Are you working a job that you're meant to work? Where there's a purpose behind it? Where you feel that this is right for you? Then that can make you very happy because a big part of our life is work. And if you're working somewhere where there's no purpose, where you don't feel the passion, that can make you depressed. So the type of work that you do is very important as well. I mean, there's just so many different things that contribute, you know, to a person's life, you know, that will heal depression. But essentially, what it boils down to is just bettering yourself as a human being. You know, and I call that Kung Fu, just basically bettering yourself in all areas of your life. And then depression will have less of a hold over you. It's not that you'll never get depressed, it's just that it's not even depression. It becomes just sadness every so often, but that's natural. But you 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 basically you you go through the sadness, you get over it a lot quicker than the average person. You know, so um it's almost like an entire lifestyle change. But everything that I stated is so complex. There's so many things involved that people are like, you know what, this is just too much. I can't do all that. Let me just take this pill. And this is the quick fix. And that's why people are addicted to these medications, antidepressants or whatever the case may be, because they just want a quick fix. They want to just hide the wound. They don't want to heal the wound. 
They just want to hide it, put a band-aid over it. But the wound is still there. It's never been fixed. But the Eastern way is teaching you how to heal the wound from within so then you don't need the band-aid anymore because there's nothing to cover. Medication is just putting a band-aid over a wound. It's not healing anything. So, to heal the wound is going to take effort. It might take a few years or longer. But that's the real way towards true health. It's not a quick fix. You know, so, you know, this video's got long enough, and this is just on the topic of depression alone. The other topics I'm going to have to make in another video at another time. But you see how deep that it gets and how long this video got. And this, the topic is just about depression and that's it. Um, so this video might be cut up in two videos depending on whether or not, you know, this, uh, this video format will accept this whole, you know, development of this video in one take. But basically... That's all that come up to my mind at this moment about depression, and I'll go over the next the other topics at another time. But if you open your eyes and you see what's going on, that's going to be a huge difference in your life, to see what's going on. You know, if you open your eyes and you see. And heal yourself from within. And then once you get to a certain point, maybe you could help somebody else see as well. But I can honestly say, you know, You know, I never felt depression the way ever again since my enlightenment. Depression was only there before I became enlightened. But once I became enlightened, once I became conscious, I never got depressed again. Depression is basically letting the mind control you. You are a slave to that mind. Once you are enlightened and once you are conscious, it no longer has a hold of you anymore and then you no longer get depressed I mean I've gone through significant things in my life that many people would be very depressed about but I was strong enough through meditation to go through those experiences and become even stronger afterwards and that's the power of meditation is that every single struggle in life doesn't hold you down it actually ends up building you to become a stronger person. Meditation is extremely powerful. You know, it's very powerful. So that's all I gotta say.